Let's, let's just recap what we were talking about uh, on the last class. And as I said, we were talking about uh, JavaScript objects. So I'm going to enter uh, into the GSB and let's just take a look. So can you tell me in just a few words, what are the objects in JavaScript? How, how would you explain that? It's some kind of, um, it's a place where we can place more like groups and subgroups of information, maybe. Okay, okay, well, fair enough. Uh, I would just uh, ask you to, to, to try to use the terminology that I'm using. Uh, it is because it will be helpful for us to understand each other better in the future. So uh, I said for the objects that they are a data structure, data type, right? And uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, exactly how it would be best to, to call them. So uh, basically what we learned so far are what is called object liter literals, sorry, uh, which means that th these are not the objects that can be, uh, I mean, the objects are much more than this, you will see in the future. But so far we are just learning the simple objects and uh, we are calling them object literals, meaning that <clears throat> when we are creating new objects, we are defining all the elements, all the content that goes into this object. And uh, as we said on the last class, what are the things that can go into the object? So uh, there are basically two categories of things that we can put inside. Can you, can you tell me? Properties, is there? Yeah, one of them is properties, that's true. Uh, and, and what methods. are the properties? And methods, right, yeah, exactly, great. <clears throat> So there are properties and methods. And basically, what is the difference between two of them? I mean, uh, generally, uh, we can say that they are very similar. However, uh, uh, the, the methods are, while well, properties are just simple variables, basically, uh, they are holding just simple data. Uh, on the other side, methods are basically what? Functions. Functions, Functions exactly. They can be executed. So this is uh, uh, another thing that we can put in the objects and how we can execute these functions well really easy basically if we make an object and how do we make an object well let's say that I have uh, a user object here I will open the curly brackets right yeah like this and then I can write my properties here and then their values so uh, for example if we have a name it will be John and if we have a last name well, it will be dope and so on. So this is how we are writing the properties and values. And basically, well, it's fair to say that this is also a property. When we want to write a method, it's also a property. So if we write, it, write something like this, uh, for example, run, then, well, this is a property, right? But uh, what mm -hmm. is different is that in this property, we are going to put a function and it's going to be anonymous function uh, like this. And then within this function, we can write any kind of functionality, any kind of action that this object can perform. And this is what makes it special. So I will write, for example, console log. I am running. And yeah, this is a method. Now, if we want to uh, access any of these properties, what we are doing? Well, we are writing the name of the object similar as we are doing when we are accessing the properties of an array or actually elements of an array. So this time we are assessing an object and then what, what we are writing here, if we want to say, for example, to get the name of this user. User uh, dots. Yeah, exactly. So we are going to use the dot, dot notation and write the name of the property that we want to call on this object. So basically this is going to give us the value, which is in this case, John. Uh, and if we want to run a method, well, the same applies. We can say dot run, but because this is a function, we are also going to include the brackets. And obviously these brackets, like in any other function, can be used also to pass in some parameters. So let's say that we have, I don't know, uh, number of kilometers, how much we can run. Uh, that is maybe written here. I'm not going to write it, but let's imagine. Then I can send the number 12. So this will actually send this value of 12 kilometers 
into our function, then we can use it within, within the function, okay? So uh, depending on how many parameters, you can put them here, just like with any regular function, okay? Um, okay, so what makes them so special? Well, because as Nicola said uh, in the beginning, the objects are something that will give us opportunity to wrap uh, a lot of different stuff inside. So, for example, we can write uh, all, all the information about the user, as you can see, or we can have a, even much more complex objects that we are going to uh, use to store all kinds of information, and not only information, but also functionality. As I said several times, uh, this is just uh, introduction into the objects because these objects are quite simple but as we progress and as we learn a little bit uh, more advanced things we are going to see how the objects can be actually used uh, in what is called object-oriented programming and basically the objects are probably one of the most uh, useful and the most uh, advanced things that we can use in, in, in in JavaScript, basically, and many other programming languages. So this is why uh, they are very important, because in the future, we are going to uh, use them a lot. But for now, uh, let's just stick to the basics and let's try to see what we can do with these object controls and how we can use them. And one of the way of using these objects like that, one of the, one of the, 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 the ways how we can uh, uh, organize the data is also used in something that is called JSON. And I think I mentioned the JSON last time, right? Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this is how it is written, JSON. Yeah. And it stands from JavaScript object notation. Okay. So what is it? Well, it is a lightweight data interchange interchange format. It's easy for humans to read and write and so on. So basically we are using a syntax which is very similar to object uh, syntax uh, as a standard to, to send data between uh, different applications or maybe within one application. And uh, this is what we are using JSON for. And uh, as you will learn, uh, a lot of applications that you will find and that you will create will have something that is called API. So what is an API? Have you heard about this word before? Yeah. Okay. So it stands from application programming interface. Do you know, Nicola, what is it? Can you explain me just in, in, in your own words? What do you think it is? I guess it's okay. So it's something that someone has already programmed and we just take the code, which is, used when then we then we can like uh edit it as we and use it like as we want i guess so like google maps api it's like uh, already programmed and we just have to take it and insert some parameters which we need for our program to work this is the best i can explain but I'm not okay sure right. not not far away from truth uh actually the uh, api is basically uh, uh an interface of one application uh, to be accessed by another application, okay? So basically what we are doing is uh, when we are making an application, we are allowing not only humans to access our application, but also other programs to access our application. And this is sometimes uh, very important. For example, if we are talking about different services like news, like, uh, I don't know, uh, weather forecast, stock exchange data, all kinds of things. Uh, I would say that the major, the most important users actually of these, these services are not really human users, direct human users, but mo most likely uh, other applications that are using this service and then, then incorporate it into another 